Greatest of Salutations, this is Tekronaut here with a new Let's Play, and today we are beginning Tales from the Borderlands. Now, this is a game I've played before. I've mostly been doing blind Let's Plays as of late on my channel, like most of Ronan Gay Season 2 was just uh, a lot of new Let's Plays, like games I've never played before or that I've only played once before. Like, I I didn't know what was most of, most of what was going to happen, basically. And, yeah. But this season we're kicking off with a game that I've played several times. But I'm going to be playing it a little differently than I usually do. Because I usually go for... With games like this, I usually go for decisions that I want to make. But this time I'm going with the mindset that I want these characters acting a certain way. And that's just how it's going to be. I'm going to shut up so Marcus can narrate. Well, I have some time. The borderlands of Pandora. We're told to contain mysterious alien treasure troves filled with advanced technology and incredible power. Vaults, the people called them. And to seek one out was to earn you the title of Vault Hunter. At least by me. You could say Handsome Jack was one such explorer, though his methods could be seen as uh, somewhat unsporting. <laughs> He ran the corporation Hyperion, and died trying to claim Pandora as his own. History's attention is fickle, my friends. It will remember those pirates like Handsome Jack, but forget the adventurers who risk it all for less... Ah, uh, obvious rewards. Stories. Legends, those are much better at getting at the real spirit of things. Stories remember both sides of the tale. Fiona! Come on, we can work this out! Fiona? <laughs> what, is there some sort of radiation leak I don't know about? So I just want to comment real quick while, while, while we got that little screen right there. I'm a big fan of Borderlands style of humor, or at least the style of humor that's in the first three Borderlands, first four Borderlands games, if you include um, the pre-sequel. Um, I'm not really a fan so, of the style of humor they got in the new Tales from the Borderlands, which is why that's a game I'm not going to be touching, but... I love the humor in the three main Borderlands games, the pre-sequel and Tales from the Borderlands. It is hilarious. So some of those title cards are actually, like, some of those introduction title cards are actually going to make me laugh later. Reese and Fiona, the main, the two main protagonists, don't really get funny ones, but there's some other characters that do. We'll be getting to those. Okay, 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 okay. Don't be a smartass. <laughs> Don't be a smartass. <laughs> I, told, I told you, this is, it's the Borderlands humor, man. I don't know if the people who write for Borderlands wrote this game or not, but if they didn't, then whoever did really, really nailed capturing the style of humor that Borderlands has. Because lines like that, like, don't be a smartass, is definitely something you would hear in the actual Borderlands games. It's that I type of humor that I just love, man. Promotion. See, I'd spent my entire career up at Hyperion, so... I I'm just that saying. makes me one of the bad guys in this story. And Handsome Jack? He was the you baddest guy of them all. This long. It must feel good I to wanted to be just you know? like him. 
Take it. It's yours. Right? I mean, you always said that. <laughs> Everyone did. I gotta be honest, I always thought it was sort of cheesy, but, uh, but hey, here Which we are. Which resulted in a company overflowing with assholes. <laughs> Animals. When Handsome Jack died, somehow got even worse. It took some time to fit in. But a few stabs and select backs, a new haircut, and the help of a couple friends, I was on my way to get the promotion that was going to change my life. Scratch that. Our lives. For the better. I was a little distracted. It was a big day for us. Luckily, Vaughn was concentrating on the important things. What's the first thing you're going to buy? I know what Henderson's making. I do his payroll. If you're getting a fraction of what he earns, you'll be rolling in it. Why don't we start with lunch? You know, let's start with something small. That'd be the smart thing, you know? Why don't we start with that? Seems like a good place to start. Well, then we're See, this is this is a first example of like this. I'm not gonna pick what I want to pick. I'm gonna pick what I want the characters to act like, because that's actually like a simple, kind of like small start, and I feel like that fits with what I'm going for, for with Reese. I would have chose respect. Like if it were me, I would have chose respect. We we gotta buy respect. Man. Like that, that'd be my choice. Because there's nothing, there's and there's three things in the world that's don't ever think the I'm most important you, from people, and that's yeah. respect, we loyalty, okay, and kindness. Those are the three most important things that. That. that you that could reason. show to a person. Around here have short when it comes and to I try to show you all three of those things to anybody who deserves it. Run this place. Sorry for if I hit the microphone, I was trying to. I was trying to scratch the side of my face because it's a little itchy. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just going to go for the funniest look for this one. Yep, let's go for that. <laughs> oh, jeez. Some of the humor in this game also isn't Borderlands. There's some stuff in this game that feels like it's its own kind of charm. And that's definitely one of those moments right there. And <laughs> that's funny too. This game is a really funny Mr. game. I'm going to tell you that now. Oh, this this no, this guy. <laughs> not going to give you spoilers on my opinion on this guy. At least not till he shows his face. But for now, don't concern yourself. We're just we're just gonna take a seat. And just send the car over when it's ready. Company car. Hugo Vasquez. Your Hyperion nemesis. Now, no this is not, not a lot of these man. aren't really funny in this game. When I said some of them were gonna make me laugh man. later, it's very and few and far between. Am. The You're title, happy, the man. character introduction cards on this it's game aren't as funny way. as like the main so, Borderlands but games, the but, but they do still get some really man. funny ones in here. It's just not for important characters like Reese, Fiona, Vasquez, or going to be Vaughn. To me. But we'll get to some funny ones so soon enough. That's still I believe we have well, two of them that are really funny in this first chapter. <laughs> it's just not, or in this first episode. That. It's just not going to happen in this video. I believe they both come after. One of them might be in this video. I don't know if this video goes on long enough to get to that guy, but there's one that happens early on, and then there's one that happens like halfway through. And they're both really funny. It's destiny, Reese. I hate Man. that line. I actually hate that line. That's the only time in this game where, like, the humor doesn't really hit for me. And it's because, and this is just my theory, I don't think they were trying to be funny there. I think they were just trying to make this guy sound like an asshole, because that's kind of what he is. I think that's the whole reason they had that line. I don't think it was to actually be funny, which is the kind of feeling I'm getting from it. So, yeah. Wow. Well I'm then, uh, that really helps what are you doing out there, buddy? How's the air and Which space? This? This promotion How's the weather out there? Out of the way of other uh, yeah, don't sound too good. <laughs> and that, my friend, is why I am promoting you to 
Terry, why isn't my new car digistructed? I'm actually drinking Coke Zero. I don't usually drink diet sodas because they're kind of they're as bad. They're pretty much as bad for you as regular soda. So there's really no point in it. The only reason I'm drinking diet soda right now is because the drink uh, drink machine I got from gave the wrong one. So yeah. It's just that's a lot of money to get together on short notice. I mean, I'm not trying to be obstinate, but I need time. Something I do like about this game, though, uh, over The Walking Dead Season 1, this I, I find it a lot easier to follow along with what's going on in this game than I did in The Walking Dead Season 1, because the subtitles are easier to read here. They're not really, like, bigger than they were in The Walking Dead Season 1. It's more so the font is easier to read at a smaller size. So, like, that's what that's why I'm having an easy time. And if you want context, I don't need text to be really big for me to read it. I play Warframe and all that. And I play Warframe and I've been playing Fantasy Star Online and I keep those at the default text size. It's more so that um, I'm using Share Factory to make these videos and the commentary is done in post. And for anyone who ever, like, adds track 2 on Share Factory, you'll know that it shrinks the original screen to, like, a fourth of its of its size while you're doing the commentary. And on top of that, you don't hear the dialogue. So it's a little hard to follow along with any game where you can't read the subtitles. That's why I don't really do mini games like these. This is, like, th this is why I wasn't doing games like these for a while, because I was trying... Because I didn't know how I was going to do it, but luckily this game so far is a little easier to, like, pay attention to than The Walking Dead Season 1 because of the subtitles being easier to read. That and the lines from this game are just a lot more memorable because of its humor and stuff. Okay. And its writing style, so there are certain parts I just remember word, word for word, for word what they say. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, say out of your mouth. It's yeah. funny because if you hear the other side of that conversation, uh, August actually gets mad uh, at that line, right. <laughs> which tells me that was probably a line of disrespect, now, not him genuinely saying about? that. Something about Before a vault we key. I believe so that's what we were really. talking about. Something about buying a vault uh, key. I think it was something about buying yep. a vault key. Right? Oh, just like that. Buying a vault key, right? You're like a kid sounding out the words. All right. Yeah, Vasquez is the worst character in this game. But I feel like he's written to be an annoying character on purpose. So it's not like the case of, like, he's a bad character. Like, it's more so he gets his job done right, because I'm pretty sure he is supposed to annoy you. There are some funny Vasquez lines in this game, but he doesn't really get those lines in this chapter. Those kind of come next chapter. This chapter, you get the more asshole lines with him. At least if I'm remembering correctly, because I've only finished chapter one at the time of doing this commentary, and I haven't played this game for like two or three years. Now, I played this game a bunch of times, don't get me wrong. I've played through it like three or four times now. Not as much as I've replayed RE2 Remake or Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Those this two games I've I'm played like seven about. times at least. Humility. And yeah, the first time I played Rift Apart was last that year, was so I did two. like play... Well, no, it's not seven times. Three. I played Rift Apart like, I want to say about five that. times. Not all at, not right. all in the same the general floor. time. I did like three playthroughs back to back to get the trophies, to do the challenge You're mode, all that stuff. Reese. And then I did two repeat let's pl or playthroughs later on, but you know when I yeah, what I was trying to say before is that if I remember correctly, I believe you get funnier Vasquez lines in the next chapter because he'll be around a little more. What the hell was in that? this chapter, he, he sort of pops in, pops out, did. pops in, pops out. No. So you kind of get the no, surface no, level asshole lines with him here. If, but that's just if I remember it correctly, because they did get. Patrick yeah, Warburton to play him, and usually no, characters no, no, voiced no, by Patrick no, Warburton no, are gonna no, have no, funny no. lines at some point. It down, it's just Vasquez is not funny in this first episode. He's just an asshole. Senior Vice Janitor Reese to Sector D three. 
Actually, no, I will admit this. The, uh, <laughs> the way he ends off that conversation with, uh, with August is a little funny, but it's more so his lines towards Reese that aren't funny. Why are you like they're just kind of too mean-spirited. I thought you were getting a promotion. Trash duty seems like the opposite of a promotion. <laughs> Maybe it's because I know how, who August is that I find that line funny because I'm like, oh yeah, August deserves to be talked to like that. <laughs> or at least at this point he does, because August can be redeemed later. But earlier on, August is also an asshole. So. That's just something you gotta know. Something just you gotta know. Trying to lighten the mood. And I didn't bring my wallet. Oh yeah, so Yvette's one of the funnier ones. Uh, I, I regret not paying attention. I was kind of rambling on. But he she does have one of the funny one, one, funnier ones. Funnier ones because it. in part of her description, it says lunch leech. <laughs> and I just find that hilarious. Yes, that is what I'm talking about. That's one of the what funny ones, by the way. Uh, there's two more. I actually didn't remember hers being funny until just now. But there's two more that come up that are funny in this episode. Um, one of them is from a character we're probably never seeing again after this episode. I don't remember if we ever see them again. And the other one is from a character we definitely don't see after this episode. Because he... Uh, I, I'm not gonna say what happens to him because that kind of gives away who I'm talking about. Awesome. And I'm in accounting. And yeah, I just want to leave it up for surprise until it happens. Time anyone notices, we'll have a vault key. Cool. Well, looks like you boys got it all figured out. I'm gonna go eat. Alone. It's funny because Vod calls uh, hey, 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 what is it, ten million dollars chump change? With uh, we need that stuff. Or ten thousand dollars. So I don't remember if it's a million or a thousand. But he calls it chump change around here. That's what he says, quote from quote. I don't know if he said. That's that's what he says exactly. I just I don't know if he said it yet or if he's gonna say it. But I find it funny that he says that, and then later on, Vasquez says there's a lot of money missing. So like, I just find it funny how like Vasquez contradicts Vaughn later on. So Vaughn's just literally being really optimistic here. He's not being realistic. He's literally just being optimistic. He's like, oh, that's nothing. We can take it. So it's like, you know, Vaughn's a smart person, but he does, he he does overlook some things like that, which is a little funny because you would think when he says that's chump change around here that he would that would literally be true. But later on, Vasquez literally makes a big deal about it when he contacts Reese. For anyone who plays this game, you know the moment I'm talking about. And for anyone who has it, I'm not really spoiling much. I'm literally spoiling a very small line in a moment where if I elaborated more on, I would be spoiling. But no, I'm not spoiling it because I'm leaving out the important stuff. But I am about to give a warning here because... uh. I, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, the songs for this game are copyrighted, the intro songs. So I had to edit in another song. I didn't really choose a very good choice for this video, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't really choose a really good choice. I just kind of chose a song I liked from a Sonic game and just threw it in. For future videos, I'm gonna be doing like looking a little harder, because I, I did this via Dreams for PS4. I'm telling it on PS5, but Dreams for PS4. That's how I got the song, but, um, yeah, I could have done better at my song choice. It's just I was kind of in a hurry to pick one, but going forward, I'll be taking these videos a little slower in terms of editing and doing commentary because of how many I got to do per episode. Like, there's going to be four, epi four videos covering this first episode alone, which, yeah, it's about the same that covered the first episode of The Walking Dead Season 1, but... Those videos didn't have to be as long as this, because the thing about Tales from the Borderlands that separates it from the Walking Dead games, a lot of the Walking Dead game episodes are between 40 minutes and an hour and a half. Whereas a lot of episodes in Tales from the Borderlands are two hours. And that includes the first episode. The first episode of this game is like, is literally just around two hours. I know, because I have the clips saved. They're all around 30 minutes. Some of them over. I think one of them's under, and the other three are all over. But 
whatever. This, this, this first chapter is two hours long. I know that for a fact. And yeah, there is some time I gotta account for when I pause the game, because I do pause the game at the beginning and end of videos. But that pausing is literally on a, only a few we're seconds even, long, and some of these clips go like a few oh, minutes like over 30. So right I'm not exaggerating. This first chapter is two hours long. If I, I remember we, correctly, I believe I the next chapter is also that long. And so is chapters four and... Or so is chapters four and... No, I think five and three are a little shorter. I don't remember. It's been a really long time since I've played this game, so I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong. I'm also sorry for talking over all this dialogue. That's what we got subtitles for. That's what we got sub subtitles for, ladies and gentlemen. And non -bi and non binary individuals. What do we say if someone asks if we got the money? What do you mean? Well, I mean, what do we tell What we got here? We should have a story. I mean, I would prefer not to tell them that we stole it from Hyperion. That would not go over well. I just think we need a plan of some sort. We just need to create some sort of distraction. Yeah, create a distraction. What? That'd be the smart thing, Ow. yeah. Let's do that. There, your fly's down. Huh? Huh? My normal choice would have been, uh, work. we tell the truth, we stole it. <laughs> because honestly, oh, that that's actually the smart choice. I want to do, well, that and create a distraction are the only ones that sound smart. Because if you say you stole it, it makes you sound like you're tougher than you look. Around these guys, which is definitely a good thing. But at the same time, if you create a distraction, that's actually also playing it smart because you'll avoid being attacked. But yeah, you know, what the hell are you afraid of, huh? I don't really have a comment on that choice. That choice is a little, a little more dust. What am I afraid of? Oh, less. That that choice really didn't matter much to me, so that's why I'm not commenting on it. Eating us for one. Listen. One tap on the arm, and Yvette can send down a loader bot if things get too entertaining. That's true. And she gave me this. It is a stun baton. I do not know how it works, but it's definitely neat. Yeah, stick! Neato! A stick that can shock the hell out of people? Like, calm chair. down, Vaughn. Like, jeez. You, me, Can't be grateful that we got a weapon? I mean, we rather come out here empty-handed, have to fight with our fist that, that can't do sure. anything, as we'll later find we'll out. <laughs> but yeah. And that's it. Then it's kick back on the moon beach time. Yeah, yeah. We'll pop champagne and everything after we get back with the key. Ah, come on. It's in the bag. The tracker's beep, beep, beeping, but I don't see the place. It's the world of curiosities, right? Yeah, do you see it? No. Could ask one of them. They seem... normal-ish. I don't know. We can still just find it. I hate asking for help. We're on a very strict time limit here, Reese. If Vasquez comes down before we're finished, I mean, I, I don't even... I want to make a comment real quick on the way that I'm having Reese act. I'm having Reese at like basically a loyal, a loyal, good hearted, smart ass. Like he's got a good heart, he's loyal, but he's a smart ass. That's basically what I'm going for with him. So forgive me for Reese saying this line <laughs> because this line makes me laugh. You know where the world of curiosities is? My buddy and I, we gotta That's the whole reason I chose this line. Say that again. And, it, and this line kind of started the whole smartass yeah, part because yeah, I did say I'm pretty sure I did pick some like smartass choices for Vasquez, but just that was just gonna be a thing for Vasquez. And I'm sorry if you hear what? noise, but I'm making a drink right now. Look, but get some lotion, get some gel, do that was just gonna be for Vasquez. Then I then I remembered the grease face line, and I was like, okay, you know what? We're just gonna make him a smartass because it fits. Got some kind of a condition. Where With Fiona, you'll see the way we portray her. Hers a little, or the, at least the way I choose to have her act. Hers is a little more complicated because I have her at like a smart ass too. Don't get me wrong, because she definitely is the bigger smart ass out of the two. And she gets more smart ass options than than uh um 
Reese does, but you know, move on to the next hole of garbage that you people call a suburb and see if they're. I wanted them both acting better. like smart asses because I felt it was fitting for both of them, but it's more it's fitting for Fiona because she acts like a smart ass even in moments where you don't choose what she says. Hey, little man. Whereas Reese, in moments you don't choose where he says, he just kind of acts like hey, kitty cat. a guy who's trying his best. In the case. Usually, or if you're you're hearing like Fiona's size, she makes them sound like a weakling and stuff. Okay, now look before we get all. Which causes bent, some moments, because there's some moments where like they like both tell their side of the story, oh. and it leads to you not really getting an accurate depiction of what happened. Bandits. One of those you know moments is gonna happen here. in this episode. Reese. We got a couple Hyperion warmongers, gentlemen. But it ain't gonna happen yet. Primate. And it's probably not gonna happen in this video either. Really? Just because I'm pretty sure this video ends before then. The we literally got six minutes left. I know it's not happening okay, in this video. Don't go okay. Um, I want the shield. Yeah, shield, shield, shield. We need, the, we need this bitch protecting us. Now let's go for the rocket launcher. Should we tell him what we Probably do that better than grenades. Let's go. Launch. Time to clock in. This is Loaderbot. Listen, boys. Who we're about to meet. It's Loaderbot. Hand over that case. Loaderbot is we're one of the best characters in this game because Loaderbot makes me laugh. Guys, let's talk about this. Loaderbot makes me laugh. Mainly in moments where he's like, "Ow, hi." Like, when he says hi, or when he, like, shows that he's in pain. Why are all of a sudden? Which, I don't think he's actually in pain. I think, he's, I think it's just a reaction to him being hit. Which is why it makes me laugh. Because I don't think he's actually feeling pain. I don't think they put pain sensors in loader bots. If they did, then that's really fucked up. But I really don't think they did. Why isn't it doing anything? But yeah. Angry eyes detected. Awaiting an instruction. Uh, it only does what I tell it to. Oh, tell it to do something already. Please stop shooting me. Engage in target. See? Piece of cake. I'm still drinking Coke Zero, by the way. I just haven't poured out my whole can into the cup yet. You have I poured to out half it of it, put some ice in it, drink it, shame. and then I poured the other half in just now and added some more ice. Ugh. <sighs> A lot of videos I do drink water in, but there is some times where I drink soda, and I tend to mention when I drink soda more often than when I drink water. Because when I drink water, it's like... I don't really feel like it's worth mentioning most of the time when I'm drinking anything, which is why you don't hear me say that too often. You'll just hear me say it every now and then. And usually I'm drinking the same thing for multiple videos in a row, so there's that too. That basically the half of the Coke Zero I was already drinking was basically almost gone already, which is why I had to refill it. Normally, um, half a can of soda would have lasted me past the end of the video because I drink it. I usually take like a sip or two, put it down, don't touch it for a minute or two, take a couple sips, put it down, don't touch it for a minute or two. So it usually lasts a while. It usually lasts a while, especially because there's ice in it, and over time the ice will melt. Make you some more drinks, you know. But whatever. I know I'm not really commenting on what's going on in the game, but that's mainly because there's not really like any like dialogue choices here. We're kind of just watching an action scene, and I do struggle a bit to comment on action scenes in games. Well, now I know why these cost so much. Unless I'm playing the action scene, Thank you, like in Sonic Frontiers or Resident Evil Village or you know. Any game where you would play the action. Uh, obviously, this game you don't do that. It would have something I thought of though. This this would have made a really good Borderlands game just in general because you have four main characters just like you usually do in a typical Borderlands game. So you could have given them classes and stuff and just had like I don't know. Maybe if you pick Fiona or Sasha, it starts from their point of view. If you pick Reese or Vaughn, it starts from their point of view. And then, like, eventually, they just, like, go into the same story. 
This would have made a killer, like, actual Borderlands game, and I would have loved actually, like, playing... I would have loved playing as Reese or Fiona in a Borderlands game where they could actually play, like, a Borderlands game where they got guns and stuff, and they could use abilities and all that. I, I thought that... I think that would have been really cool. Interesting. Unfortunately, I don't think we're ever going to get that. Because Borderlands 3 made Reese into, um... A company man. Which he kind of already is here, right. but... I don't know, some people don't like the direction Reese was taken in... Borderlands 3. I kind of think it's the right direction, because he basically became a company man who's not corrupt. Which I think goes along with his character development in this game. Like, him actually becoming a co like Him actually becoming the owner of a company. And then not being corrupt. Like, I think he learned his lesson from this game, and yeah. This is all I'm gonna say. Yeah, this is this is it. This is it. <laughs> oh, this is the one where I said I'm pretty sure this guy don't return, but I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I love his I love his heart. <laughs> look at the look, on, the look on his face, man. Just the look on his face. That's all I want. He was just like, uh, uh, I, I ain't messing with that. <laughs> he just started backing up. <laughs> <laughs> Guy looks so Oh, dude, I, lo I love Grease Face. Grease Face is funny. Grease <laughs> uh, Face is a funny character. You gotta love Grease Face. Even if he's on screen for, what, all of like a minute or two? <laughs> She's still funny. But yeah, I am gonna be ending off the video here. So, bye! Game over!